I don't tend to like long introduction slides about who the speaker is at conferences. However, if you're really curious, I'm sure you can Google me. That said, my name is Michael Still and I'm an open source developer in Canberra, Australia. I've spent a long time contributing to open source in general, but before Shake and Fist, I had spent about eight years contributing to the OpenStack project, with a focus on compute. At the end of my time with the OpenStack project, I became curious about if there was a simpler way to achieve some of the things OpenStack Compute seeks to achieve. Specifically, I wanted a simpler, faster, easier to maintain way to do something which looked quite a lot like OpenStack, but for my own personal needs. Don't worry if you can't read all the text on this slide. It's just there to demonstrate my point. You see, OpenStack today is a complicated beast. Not only does it try to perform well for large clusters, but it also embraces a wide set of possible implementations. This includes hypervisors, storage, networking, and more. This was a deliberate tactical choice made by the OpenStack community years ago, forming a so-called big tent for vendors to collaborate in to build open source options. It made a lot of sense at the time, to be honest, but, and I was on the committee that embraced that plan. However, OpenStack today finds itself constrained by the large number of permutations it must support, 10 years of software and backwards compatibility legacy, and a decreasing investment from those same vendors that OpenStack courted so actively. Luckily, if you can call it that, 2020 presented me with opportunities to not leave my house and have all my social engagements cancelled, which meant I had time to explore some of my ideas about simpler clouds. Hence shaken fist, as in old man shakes fist at cloud. Shaken fist makes a series of simplifying assumptions that allow it to achieve a surprisingly large amount in not a lot of code. For example, it only supports one hypervisor, one hypervisor operating system, one networking implementation, and lacks an image service tries hard to be respectful of compute resources while idle and to be as fast as possible to deploy resources when requested. It is entirely possible to deploy a new instance and start it booting in less than a second, for example, although this assumes that the boot image is already held in cache. When complete, Shake and Fist will likely be a good choice for small deployments such as Home Labs and Telco Edge applications. It is unlikely to be a good choice for large-scale compute, however. Shaken Fist is a research project, although it has been used to deliver some amount of elastic compute capacity in production, I would consider that a brave choice at the moment. In general, it has been used when flexibility in virtual machine hardware specification and networking is required, a thing which is hard to express in existing clouds. For example, Shaken Fist is very good at importing existing virtual machine images from non-cloud solutions. There are two things I want to achieve with this talk. Explore if there's a simpler way to do some of the things that open source cloud orchestration systems attempt to do, and to try and play with the new opportunities that virtual presentations such as FOSDEM 2021 provides. So let's start with my first experiment. I think it's weird to start off a presentation like this with an install demo, because I haven't really sold you on the benefits of Shake and Fist yet. However, I want to talk about it later, so I need to set some scenery first. Installing Shake and Fist is simple and fast. Shake and Fist supports a single machine deployment, we call them localhost, Google Cloud with nested virtualization, which is where we run our per commit CI, AWS bare metal instances created by the AWS APIs, traditional metal machines, and OpenStack with nested virtualization. In general, localhost, Google Cloud, and metal are frequently used at the moment. AWS metal is prohibitively expensive because of the cost of AWS metal machines. I want to demonstrate a simple cluster deployment so I'll use Metal to deploy a three-node cluster in Sydney. These machines are Supermicro server class machines with dual Xeons with 48 threads, 256 gig of RAM each, and SSDs. It should be noted that it's also important that the network between the machines be configured to support jumbo frames, as our overlay networking requires that. So let's kick off an install so we can talk about other things while we wait. First off, we need to fetch the installer, which is in the main Shake and Fist repository. That's just a simple git clone and then changing to the right directory. It's important to note that the installer assumes that it can change the configuration of the target nodes quite a lot. For example, it configures syslog, Prometheus, Grafana, kernel same page merging and networking. So I wouldn't run it on machines that you're very fond of without testing first. Shake and Fist will attempt to perform some checks while installing to ensure that you have jumbo frames enabled, for example, and your machines are capable of running KVM. Next, we tell the installer what we're using, what type they are, and some simple attributes of the install. And now we're ready to kick off the install. I should mention here that the installer is implemented as Ansible plays, so I've had to pre-configure SSH so that Ansible can log into the machines. 
So here's the first experiment. I'm going to minimize this install window to a thumbnail at the edge of the screen and keep talking about other things. I've not sped up the video at all, so you'll get a realistic impression of how long the install takes. When it is complete, we'll come back and talk a bit more about the finished product. What is the architecture of Shaken Fist? Let's consider a hypothetical five node cluster. I know the install we're doing in our tiny window is three machines, but I want to use five for this example because it helps demonstrate how some of the components are deployed. Each of the machines in the cluster must be running a modern version of Ubuntu. The latest LTS release is fine with us. These machines should be interconnected on a reasonably fast network, but we don't require anything specific from the network apart from that Jumbo frames be enabled. Jumbo frames are required because we use VXLAN for our overlay virtual networks, and the VXLAN packet header pushes our Ethernet frames outside the size of a standard frame. It should be noted that we're considering adding support for Debian as well, because Ubuntu lacks support for Gluster and GFAPI in QMU and Libvirt, and our current thinking is that Gluster might be an interesting way to implement shared block storage without adding the additional complexity of something like Ceph. All shaken fist state is stored in an etcd cluster formed by the first three machines in the cluster. Other machines in the cluster will run an etcd proxy, but aren't used as storage nodes. It is envisaged that the bigger shaken fist cluster would run dedicated etcd machines, but that isn't necessary at the scale we've been using shaken fist for so far. Each shaken fist machine runs a gunicorn based REST API service. This is how clients interact with the system. One unique aspect is that there's no API gateway for Shaken Fist. An external client can talk to any machine running the REST API. The API implementation will proxy or queue requests to the correct node as required, but we'll discuss this more in a couple of slides. Naively, you can just place a load balance in front of all of the Shaken Fist nodes and load balance evenly across all of the API services. The REST API calls on services from the Shaken Fist installation itself. This is drawn here as a single box, but in reality there are several daemons which run. One which provides the API, one which handles processing queued network tasks, another which handles all other queued tasks, and so on. These are managed by a central daemon which monitors their health and restarts daemons on crash. Shaken Fist itself doesn't actually know much about virtual machines. What it knows is how to download images from HTTP URLs, transcode and resize them using QMU, and then construct a libvirt domain XML definition for the virtual machine to run. This is then handed off to libvirt to orchestrate QMU and KVM into producing a running virtual machine. The exception is the networking, which will handle outside of libvirt, but we'll talk more about that in a minute. And then finally, there are the virtual machines. All machines in a Shaken Fist cluster run virtual machines, and Shaken Fist will attempt to place virtual machines to ensure that the minimum amount of disk is used by placing virtual machines with the same base disk on the same machine, and that virtual networks are as simple as possible by placing virtual machines on machines which already have that network present. The only exception here is that one of the Shaken Fist machines is nominated as the network node, and the schedule will prefer not to place virtual machines on the network node if possible. If the cluster is reaching its maximum capacity, we will run virtual machines on the network node as well. Shaken Fist is now installed. Overall, the installation takes about three and a half minutes. That might not be always strictly true. I've cheated here by ensuring that the system packages and Python dependencies are up to date before running the installer. In general, in our CI system running on slower Google Cloud instances, the install can take as long as 10 minutes. Let's have a quick play with our new Shaken Fist cluster. It's easier for this demo to just log into one of the machines in the cluster, because they now all have the Shaken Fist command line client installed. They also have the configuration nicely set up. You can, of course, install the client on other machines and move the configuration around. The configuration is quite simple, and it's contained in an RC file for convenience. We only really need the last three lines in order to talk to the cluster. Here we are operating as the system namespace, which is an admin user. This means we can see and control all resources in the cluster. We have an empty cluster at the moment. So let's make our first virtual machine. First off, we need a network for that virtual machine. And now we can create the VM itself.
There's a fair bit happening in that command line. The number one is the number of virtual CPUs the virtual machine should have. And 1024 is the number of megabytes of RAM it should be allocated. Minus D specifies the disk configuration for the machine. Here we say we want an 8 gigabyte image based on Cirros. Cirros here is shorthand for the full HTTP URL of the Cirros image, which Shake and Fist knows how to expand. We currently support this shorthand syntax for Cirros and Ubuntu, but it would be easy to add for other distributions. You can provide a URL to any cloud image, of course. Minus N specifies that the virtual machine should be on the network we just created. Examining what happens to launch that instance is a good worked example of many of our architectural decisions. Here's a simplified diagram, which is just our three machines in Sydney. I've removed all our fancy little virtual machine boxes off the diagram, because I want to show how placement works as well. First off, before you ever get around to using the cluster, each shaken fist node is measuring its resource usage regularly and storing it in etcd. This happens every 30 seconds by default, but it's relatively cheap. On an idle cluster, you wouldn't notice this workload. Now let's assume you make a request with the Shake and Fist client to the GUnicorn REST API service. This can be on any node, but we've picked the first machine because that's what happened in the CAN demo before. You may remember that the authentication configuration there specified localhost as our endpoint. The client authenticates with the REST API, acquires a JWT token, and then makes REST calls against various endpoints on the API service. In this case, we make a post against the instance's endpoint with details of the instance to create. The REST API then calls the underlying Shake and Fist code to create the instance. We validate the request makes sense, and then create a placeholder instance in the etcd database. This is pretty much a case of allocating a UUID. etcd will immediately replicate the instance record to the other etcd masters in the cluster, which in our example is all of the machines. I haven't represented that on the diagram to reduce clutter. Shake and Fist then reads the metrics about all the nodes. It reads some other things as well, such as which machines have the requested network and image present, but I've simplified this diagram for clarity. The scheduler then makes a decision about which machine it thinks the instance should run on. Shake and Fist then writes a job to a queue requesting that the instance be started, and polls the state of the instance object in the database for a configurable period of time. If the job is executed and the instance created within the timeout, Shake and Fist will return a complete instance to the caller, and the operation feels synchronous. If the timeout occurs, the caller has returned an instance which has its state field set to indicate that setup is still occurring. At that point, the client is expected to poll for further updates. We do this fake synchronous behavior because for images which are in cache or which are relatively small, we often return a started instance within seconds. However, if your image is very large, it might take hours to download before the instance can start. In the demo, the instance is placed on the second machine in the cluster. Each machine is monitoring the state of the queue, and the second machine will detect it has a job. It reads that job in, as well as the instance object. Shake and Fist at this point will also validate there are still sufficient resources on the target machine to run the instance, and if that isn't true, we'll redo scheduling, placement, and job creation tasks on another machine. I haven't drawn any of that here for clarity, however. Let's assume that the machine doesn't have the correct image in cache. Shake and Fist will then download the image from the specified HTTP server and place a transcoded version in the image cache. That transcoded version is then resized to the target size, and this resized version is used as the base image for the instance. That is, the instance will use a copy on write layer on top of the base image to reduce on disk storage requirements. Next, the Shake and Fist machine creates a VXLAN overlay network between itself and the first node. This is because the first node has been designated as the network node and creates a network namespace to route traffic from the virtual network to the internet. The network namespace also optionally contains a DHCP server. The setup on the network node is requested by queuing another job in etcd, which the network node will execute. Finally, the instance is created and plugged into the virtual network on the second machine. It can now route to the internet via the network node, which is separated from instances on other virtual networks. Virtual networks can contain overlapping IP blocks. So far, we've covered a bunch of decisions that the Shake and Fist team has made. There's one hypervisor OS, Ubuntu. There's one hypervisor, QMU and KVM. There's one networking implementation, VXLAN overlands. There's one database, etcd. There are a few things we haven't covered as well, like, for example, that all instances get a config drive and that we don't have a metadata service. Networks may optionally have NAT to the internet and DHCP services. These are both implemented via a network namespace on the network node. Virtual networks can also have overlapping IP blocks, which is true in OpenStack as well, 
but is surprisingly untrue in some other cloud solutions. There's no image service equivalent to OpenStack's clients. Images are just downloads from the internet specified by URL. There is a simple shortcut syntax to make this easier to use, where you can, for example, say Ubuntu colon 2004, and we'll turn that into the URL that to the latest image from Canonical's cloud image archive. Snapshots of instances are supported, but we don't currently have a great story around how to serve them back to you. We support multiple remote consoles for an instance. This includes hypervisor-provided VNC, as well as a serial port over a telnet connection. These consoles require either a proxy or direct access to the hypervisor network. We do not currently provide such a proxy. We do not currently have working floating IPs or security groups, but both are planned. We also do not have a shared block storage solution at the moment. So if a hypervisor node fails, you will lose data from an instance. We're investigating options to implement this at the moment. We record information from instances as Shaken Fist does things. This includes how long various operations during the instance start process took, as well as all instance state changes. We also have a simple trigger facility which can watch the console log output and detect login prompts. We use this a lot in our CI tests and intend to extend it to capture things like SSH host keys. Here's an example of the events for the instance we just created in our demo. It's hard to read though, so let me zoom in. You can see here, for example, the scheduling process, that fetching the image took two and a half seconds, and that we detected a console login prompt from the instance. Thanks for coming on a lightning tour of Shaken Fist with me. It's been an especially hard year for so very many people, and I appreciate you making the time, even if it's just for a video. As I said earlier, Shaken Fist is a research project to see what a simpler cloud might look like. That said, I think it's a fruitful experiment which has shown what radical simplicity can still produce something flexible and useful. Shaken Fist's server is currently about 5,000 lines of Python code, not including tests or client libraries. Shaken Fist is by no means complete, but there's a small team working on the project, and we expect to become more complete with time. We'd welcome other contributors, and we try to be a friendly bunch. Shaken Fist is licensed under the Apache 2 license. Shaken Fist currently has client libraries for Python, Golang, JavaScript, and a Terraform provider. There is, of course, the command line client I showed you as well, but we currently don't have a web client. If you'd like to know more, Shaken Fist has a website at shakenfist.com, and all of its components are on GitHub at github.com slash shakenfist. Thank you.